Today's class will be given by His Grace uh, Ramachandra Das on Srimad Bhagavatam, verse 4.9.29 onwards. Uh, I would like to read. Ramachandra Das is a disciple of His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj and was introduced to Krishna consciousness in 1998. He was first initiated in New Vrindavan in 2006 and received Brahman initiation at Alachua in 2009. He was working as an IT professional in the USA for several years. He and his wife Sita Priya Devidasi had been actively preaching and nurturing devotees in two Bhakti Riksha groups in Atlanta. They are loved and looked up great respect by the entire Atlanta congregation. They are alone one of the senior counselors and chief coordinators for the annual Radha Gopinath Mandir Kartika Yatras for the East Coast. Prabhuji also with Sita Priya Mataji and their son Lakshman now reside in Pune rendering various services. Ramachandra Prabhu is known for his very interesting and thought provoking classes. We are very fortunate to have him speak on our conference call after a long gap. Prabhuji, are you there on the call? Yes, Mataji, I am there on the call. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavas Pranam, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Thank you. Thank you Prabhuji for giving your association and valuable time uh, in this conference session. So you can please take over Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much Mataji. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Ayanam Namaskrityam Ram Chaiva Narotam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udhirai Nasht Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttam Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishthuki Krishna Yavasudevaya Devaki Nandanayacha Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha So I know most of the devotees are muted. I will just read the words uh, and you all can repeat it after me. This is Canto 4, Chapter 9, X number 29. Maitreya Uvacha Matu Saptanya Vagbane, Ridi Vidas to Tans Maran, Nechang Mukti Patir Muktim, Tasma Tapam Upe Ivan, Maitre Uacha, Matu Saptanya Vagbane, Ridi Vidas to Tans Maranam, Nechang Mukti Patir Muktim, Tasma tapam upe ivam Maitre vacha Matu saptan vapane Riti vidas to tans manon Nechan mukti patir muktim Tasma tapam upe ivam Translation and perfect by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedan Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Joy. Maitreya answered, Dhru Maharaj's heart, which was pierced by the arrows of the harsh words of his stepmother, mother, was greatly aggrieved. And thus, when he fixed his mind upon his goal of life, he did not forget her misbehavior. He did not demand actual liberation from this material world, but at the end of his devotional service, 
when the supreme personality of godhead appeared before him he was simply ashamed of the material demands he had in his mind now considering that this purport is very long what i do is i'm going to just read some parts of it uh parts which are which are going to be relevant to what we'll be discussing today but uh if you have see the purport starts of prabhupada says this important verse has been discussed by many stalwart commentators and trust me this purport also which prabhupada has given is very profound but again <clears throat> considering uh, you know due to time factor we cannot go through the whole purport i will very humbly request devotees either after the class or if some of you all have already read it please do go through the purport it's very informative and educative i'll just read some parts of it some paragraphs and then we'll get into discussing this words so this is the first paragraph from where i'm reading why was dhruv maharaj not very pleased even after achieving the goal of life he desired a pure devotee is always free from any kind of materialistic material desires in the material world once material desires are all most demonic one thinks of others as one's enemies one thinks of revenge against one's enemies one aspires to become the topmost leader or topmost person in this material world and thus one competes with all others this has been described in the bhagavad gita 16th chapter as asuric a pure devotee has no depend from the lord and i'm going to skip over i'm going to go to the next verse in this verse maitreya replied to vidura that dhru maharaj influenced by a revengeful attitude towards his insulting stepmother did not think of mukti nor did he know what mukti was therefore he failed to aim for mukti as his goal in life but a pure devotee also does not want liberation i'm again going to skip i'm going to go to the next page literally this is more towards the end of the purport the great sage maitreya explained that dhru maharaj did not desire in the beginning to engage in the service of the lord but he wanted an exalted position better than his grandfathers this is more or less not service to the lord but service to the senses even if one gets the position of brahma the most exalted position in this material world he is a conditioned soul again i'm going to skip to a following verse when dhruv maharaj now this is an important verse where prabhupad explains why dhruv maharaj is feeling morose when dhruv maharaj became situated on the vasudev platform due to seeing the lord face to face all his material contamination was cleared thus he became ashamed of what his demands were and what he had achieved he was very much ashamed to think that although he had gone to madhuvan giving up the kingdom of his father and he had gotten a spiritual master like narad muni he was still thinking of revenge against his stepmother and wanted to occupy an exalted post within this material world these were the causes of his moroseness even after he received all the desired benedictions from the lord and just the last paragraph i'll leave, read a couple of lines the lord fulfilled all dhruv maharaj's desires his revengeful attitude towards his stepmother and step brother was satisfied his desire for a more exalted position than that of his great grandfather was also fulfilled and at the same time his eternal position in dhruv lok was fixed although dhruv maharaj's achievement of an eternal planet was not conceived of of by him krishna thought what will dhruv do with an exalted position with this material world therefore he gave dhruv the opportunity to rule this material world for 36000 years with unchangeable senses and the chance to perform many great sacrifices and thus become the most reputed king within this material world and after finishing with all this material enjoyment dhruv would be promoted to the spiritual world which includes the dhruva loka om agyanat nirandhasya 
ज्ञानंजन शलाकय चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम नमो विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नीति नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातादेशिण जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीयाद्वैत गधाधार श्रीवासादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna. I would just like to uh, make sure that I am audible and it's pretty clear. Mataji, could, could you confirm that my voice is audible and clear? Yes, Prabhu, can hear you clearly. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yes, Prabhu ji. Krishna. Okay, so first of all, I would like to start off by thanking the organizers of this uh, program. for giving me this opportunity to serve all of you and uh, i've just been reflecting i know that this has been going on for for many years and trust me this endeavor whoever is putting in so much efforts to do this it's really commendable because i used, i have been in that country for 17 18 years and I, i know the challenges of daily sadhana doing it you know either alone or just with family considering that i think this effort and uh, it's really really very uh, commendable and i uh, my really i pay my obeisances to all of your all of the organizers who have been putting this together every day and i consider myself really fortunate that you all have given me this opportunity to speak thank you very much so <clears throat> in this section of shrimad bhagavatam we are witnessing two of the most exalted personalities maitreya muni and vidura they are discussing some of the most you can say soul stirring and lightning topics and especially in this section we see uh, maitreya muni explaining to vidura everything about uh, this episode of dhruv maharaj and <clears throat> we see in the previous verses dhruv maharaj has got the beautiful darshan of the lord he is offered some very very sweet a uh, heartfelt prayers to the lord and the lord has blessed him and after blessing him the lord lord leads back to his abode and yes dhruv standing you know is going back home but in the verse the two in two verses back it is said that when dhruv maharaj goes back home he is not pleased now considering what he has just caught you know he's practically got what everybody in this material world is aspiring for you know literally living for and dying for he's got everything the lord has given he's seen the beautiful form of the lord face to face and yet he's going back home not pleased so that brings up this question in the mind of vidura in the last words i'm sure that was which was discussed yesterday we were asked this question to maitreya muni that okay what was the reason why he is not pleased and answering that question of vidura we got to this word of today <coughs> wherein maitreya muni is saying dhruv maharaj's heart which was pierced by the arrows of the harsh words of his step mother was greatly aggrieved and thus when he fixed his mind upon the goal of life he did not forget her misbehavior he did not demand actual liberation from this material world but at the end of his devotional service when the supreme personality of god had appeared before him he was simply ashamed of the material demands he had made in his mind so from this verse onwards and through the next six verses following this we will 
get to know why Dhruv Maharaj is not pleased. And what to talk of not being pleased? In this verse, it is said he is feeling ashamed. Now, if we analyze this verse that we are discussing today, it is revealing actually the profound and the most unparalleled nature of this Srimad Bhagavatam. This is what Srimad Bhagavatam is all about. And I'll explain it to you all. See, what, when Dhruva Maharaj went to the forest, there were two things that drew him to go into the forest and do that whole tapasya of six months and then he saw the form of the Lord. One was... He did that whole tapasya, he left his whole house, what, what was the one reason? For material domination. He wanted to occupy an exalted position. I want a planet, I want a kingdom, even greater than what to talk of my father, greater than my grandfather, greater than my great grandfather, means greater than even Brahmaji, means I want something even greater than Brahmalu. We all know in the whole material creation, Brahmalok is utmost. There is nothing higher than Brahmalok. And the Lord has fulfilled Dhruv's desires beyond his expectation. He's granted him Dhruvalok, which is even higher than Brahmalok. It's a part of the spiritual world. It's not material. So, one desire of his material domination, I want this kingdom, he's got it. What was his other desire? What drove him? He had approached the Lord for what? He wanted revenge against this stepmother of his who had insulted him. It was, try to understand, Guru Maharaj is five years old. It's so important to understand. Imagine at the age of five, you know, you're a child. And at that age, of course, he was, you know, he had the Kshatriya blood in him. But can you imagine what an intensified false ego this boy has. At the age of five, he took it as an insult. And he said, with determination, I'm going to do something. I need to do something. Right? And now, as a result of this, in the following verses, we'll see that both his stepmother, Suruchi, and her son, Uttama, are going to die. It will be explained in the following verses. I don't want to get into that. But that means that his second uh, driving force with which he had approached the Lord is also fulfilled. So he's got both of them. Right? He's got this whole domain of Dhruvilo, his, you know, whole revenge and his whole anger against his mother and his son is fulfilled. So yet, what to talk of being happy He's feeling ashamed. Why is he feeling ashamed? See, I'll explain it to you. Suppose, you know, I i am wearing some very dirty, tattered clothes. I've been working in the field or something. And, uh, you know, if I'm alone, I don't feel bad or embarrassed or awkward or something, you know, because it's part of my work and I'm just coming out. But... If the same me in those dirty, torn, tattered clothes, if I'm in the presence of someone who's really wearing, you know, very neat, ironed, uh, silk clothes, what happens? I feel very embarrassed. I feel very awkward. Right? So similarly, why was Dhruva Maharaj feeling ashamed? Now because he's in the presence of the Supreme Lord. In the presence of the Supreme Lord, he's, he's thinking, what did I do? Why did I approach the Lord with all these material desires? And if we analyze, this is the difference between one approaching the Supreme Lord and one approaching anybody else other than the Supreme Lord. See, we have beautiful examples. Here is Guru Maharaj who approached the Supreme Lord. He's been given this whole Guru below. He's ashamed. He's not happy. He's embarrassed. And in the same Bhagavatam, we have the example of whom? Hiranya Kashipu. He did the same tapasya. He went through this whole protocol like 
Dhruv Maharaj. And he was also blessed. Whatever he wanted, Brahmaji gave him. He wanted immortality, he got it in a very indirect way. Yes, you won't die in the morning, you won't die in the evening. Blah, blah, blah. What was the outcome of Hiranyakashipu's tapasya? He became proud. He was so proud of his power. He was so proud of his prowess. And you know, after that, when he comes back to his palace, what he does? Total demonac. And here is Dhruv Maharaj. He is feeling ashamed. So this is what Srimad Bhagavatam we have to understand. In any other spiritual practice, this would have been considered perfection, right? Anybody, why do they perform dharma to get artha, to get kama, and finally maybe moksha? So yes, through Maharaj, he got it. He got artha. He is going to become king for the next 36,000 years. He is not going to lack in any way any sense gratification. And then he is guaranteed also moksha. After you leave your body, after you are done with this 36,000 years, you are going to go to Dhru Loka. So, in any other practice, this is the perfection, this is their goal, this is what they do, Every whatever they do is for this. But Srimad Bhagavatam, it's an Amala Puranam. This is considered as a Mala. That is what we read in one of the, purpose, in one of the verses of the Bhagavad, that in the beginning to engage in the service of the Lord, Eight-stage Maitreya explained to Dhruv Maharaj that Dhruv Maharaj did not desire in the beginning to engage in the service of the Lord, but he wanted an exalted position better than his grandfather's. This is more or less not service to the Lord, but it's service to the disciples. Agatam is all about Savai Pumsam Paro Dharmo Yato Bhakti Rado Kraje Ahetuki. It's totally unmotivated. Anya Abhilashita Shunyam. And this is not Anya Abhilashita. This is totally Abhilasha driven. And that is why whenever somebody approaches the Lord, the same Srimad Bhagavatam says, you have desires, go to the Lord. Akama Sarva Kama Moksha Kama Udharadi Tivrena Bhakti Yogena Jajate Purusha Param. Go to the Purusha Param. Krishna. Where is the difference? Krishna also gave you, Brahmaji also gave Hiranyakashipu. What was the, the difference? The difference is that when Krishna gives, and the Lord Vishnu gave Dhruv Maharaj, cleansing of the heart happens. You get what you want, but those desires to enjoy are washed away. When you have it, you don't want to enjoy it anymore. You've got the higher taste. You've seen the beautiful form of the Lord. And that is why he tells, I was looking for some pieces of broken glass versus what I've got is a diamond. And in case of Hiranyakashipu, he got everything. There was no cleansing. The heart was not cleansed. That is the problem. That is the major difference. That is the major difference between approaching Supreme Lord and, in, and this is what Srimad Bhagavatam is establishing. That is why I said that this verse, it's revealing the unparalleled nature of Srimad Bhagavatam. This is what Srimad Bhagavatam is all about. So, now somebody may ask that, okay, why did the Lord then fulfill his desire? He should not have even fulfilled his desire. Very nicely explains. He says that even though the motive is impure, the Lord, the Lord sees what is your intent, why you are doing. But the Lord, when he sees us rendering service towards him, the Lord is very pleased. The Lord is very pleased. Whatever may be the intent, he sees that this person is rendering service to me. That is why, as we just now said, so I pum sam, I mean, sorry, akama sarva kama moksha kama udharadi tivrena bhakti yogena jajate purusha param. 
when the Lord sees anyone rendering service unto him, what he does is, he reciprocate. He gave Dhruva Maharaj what he wanted, but he purified his heart. He cleanses the heart. When the Lord is compassionate, he gives the devotee whatever he desires. But when the Lord gives his greatest installation of compassion, Prabhupada says, then what he does? He, yasyaham anugranandhi harishyatad dhanam shanay. He can take away also. See, in the case of Dhruva Maharaj also, he did it the other way around. First, he took away everything from Dhruva Maharaj. Five-year-old boy, he was dishonored, he was out of the palace, he was in the forest, he knows nobody. He took away everything. But that was his great installation of compassion for Narad Muni. I mean, sorry, for Dhruva Maharaj. And then, what he did is, he gave him also what he desired. He said, take this also. So first the Lord took away everything and then he gave him also everything. So, now, this verse, as I said, is talking more about the moroseness of Dhruva Maharaj. And as I said that the following six verses, in the following six verses, Dhruva Maharaj himself, through his thoughts, is going to expound on why he is ashamed, why he is not pleased. And, you know, in the following days, I am sure the other speakers will talk much more, they will explain it in more details, they will deep dive into this moroseness of uh, Dhruva Maharaj. So what I thought is, I wanted to speak on something uh, which I would say, I will do a flashback. I wanted to discuss on Dhruva Maharaj's journey till this point. Today he has seen the Supreme Lord, he's got what he wanted. I wanted to discuss on how this journey started or what triggered this journey and who was uh, responsible for it. So, if we know, I am sure you all have all been attending the previous classes and all the other speakers must have described it very wonderfully that how Dhruva Maharaj one day, you know, he is the son of uh, Suniti and uh, Uttanapad, his father has another queen, Suruchi, whose son is Uttama. So one day Dhruva Maharaj walks into this palace, he sees Uttama sitting on the lap of his father Uttanapad and he gets this desire, I also want to sit in my father's lap, a five-year-old boy. And as he was about to sit on the lap, we know how uh, Suruchi insults him, speaks very harsh, strong words, and it's very heartbreaking for him. So more than, you know, heartbreaking, he gets very angry. And his lips are quivering, and he comes home crying to his mother, Suniti. And Suniti has already been informed of what has happened. It's traumatic. He's totally traumatic and he's totally determined. I'm going to do something about this. He's totally determined. Rather the name, the word Dhruva means determination. So he comes to his mother and he says that, okay, I am going to get a kingdom which is going to be greater than my father, my grandfather, my great grandfather. That was his thought, a total resolve was a resolution, I'm going to do it. So he had the determination, but he didn't know how to do it. Please, this part of the class, the second part of the class is more important. The first part of the class will be discussed, as I said, with, by more speakers. But I'll just like you all to focus on the second part of the class. So he has the determination, but he does not have the direction. And this is the problem of today's world, today's society that we are living in. We are all so determined. From childhood we have this determined, literally determination instilled into us. But it's unfortunately misdirected determination. We, are, we work so hard, we you know, literally uh, compromise on everything in our lives to maybe, you know, just get a visa to come into USA. If I'm in USA, I want to become a manager, I want to become a CEO, I want to, you know, this just goes on and on. So, the determination is there. But unfortunately, the determination in everybody's life, it's not directed correctly. It's directed. 
So coming to Dhruv Maharaj, when he comes to Suniti, she sees him, she sees that this boy is totally broken and he's totally, you know, traumatic, he's crying, he's angry, she's seeing all the emotions in him and at some point she also feels very, you know, she tells him, yes, I know Uttanpad doesn't even love me, what to talk of you, but, but, as a mother, she fulfills her role most perfectly. And this is the message that we, all of us, on this call, outside the call, we parents, I won't say we mothers, because this is the responsibility of parents, if not of mothers. What does she do? She sees the determination of this boy, and she knows that this boy is going to do something. What she does is, she gives Dhruv Maharaj direction. And there are two beautiful verses in the previous chapter, in chapter 8, wherein, I'm sure when it would have been discussed, the, whoever was the speaker would have explained this wonderfully. In Canto, in the 8th chapter, verse number 22, she explains to Dhruv, Dhruv Maharaj, very beautiful verse. I won't read the verse, I'll just read the first line. She tells Dhruv Maharaj, her son, Tameva Vatsa Shraya Bhritya Vatsalam Dhruv, do one thing. Tameva Vatsa, my son, Vatsa means son. You take Ashraya, you take shelter. Of whom? Bhritya Vatsalam. Bhritya Vatsalam is the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is very kind to all his devotees. If you want anything, you want your desires to be fulfilled, go to the Supreme Lord only. Take Ashraya. Make a note of this word that she is telling Dhruv Maharaj, her son Dhruv. I can't think of anybody else whom you should take shelter of but the Supreme Lord. And in the next verse, she says, Nanyam Tatta Nanyam Tatta Padma Palasa Lochanad Na Anyam for those of you all who know Hindi, Anyam means kya? Koi or. No. No one else. No one else can take care of you. Who can fulfill your desires. Who can mitigate your distress. But Padma Palasha Lochanad. Who has lotus like eyes. You go to that Supreme Lord and take shelter of Him. Now let us stop here and think. We as parents, I'm sure most of us on the call are parents and we have children. What do we do when, when you know, a five-year-old kid comes to me and he starts crying and I would just, you know, try to distract him. I would say, so okay, son, you know, these things happen. I would either give him a candy. I would try to mitigate it in any way, in any way but this way. Right? This is such an important lesson that Sumiti is teaching us. That it's at this age five. This is what Prahlad Maharaj also says in the following cantos. It's at this age that we have to make the child start taking shelter of the Supreme Lord. And the quality that Sumiti is instilling into Dhruv at the age of five, is what? Krishna Kasharanam. Only Krishna. Krishna Ek. Ek means one. Only take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. And this is what Krishna wants also. Bhagavad Gita ends how? Sarva Dharmam Paritya Jamam Ekam Sharanam Rajaha. This is what Krishna wants. Take shelter of me alone and Mother Suniti is teaching us so wonderfully by instructing her son Dhruv, don't think of anyone else. Nanyam, only take Ashraya of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Now why I thought of speaking on this, I'll share with you all, you know, because truthfully this has been my meditation for now, I would say since the Purushottam month. You know, when the Purushottam month was starting, I always like to... Uh, think of some particular mood that we can, I can get into or some theme and I was, I was supposed to talk on some subject matter for 
30 days. I said, wow, 30 days is a long time. What are you going to talk on? So just before the month, I don't know how, by mercy of Srila Prabhupada, this dawned into me. Krishnaika Sharanam. If some of you all have read in Chaitanya Charitra Met, in the Madhya Leela, when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is instructing Sanatan Goswami, at one point he tells him that any devotee who performs devotional service, 26 qualities manifest within him. And one of those qualities is this Krishnaika Sharanam. So that was my whole meditation for that whole month and I extended it into the uh, Kartik month also and I said since Kartik month is just over, now we are in this month of book distribution show, why shouldn't I talk on the same subject matter? Taking shelter, Ashraya. See if you analyze, taking shelter is very natural for any living entity. It's constitutional as we can say, right? A child. A child very naturally takes shelter of his parents, be it even a monkey or be it a human being. As soon as the child gets scared, what does he do? He runs towards his mother. In the warm embrace of his mother, he's fearless. Wives take shelter of their husbands, hopefully. When we grow up, you know, when our intellect develops, then as employees we are taking shelter of managers, we are taking shelter of... At any given stage, if we analyze, we are always ashraya, we are always taking shelter of some individual, some arrangement. Or if not of anything, at least we are so much, you know, we have so much faith in our intelligence. Any given time we are always taking shelter of our intelligence. Srila Prabhupada used to tell this very sweet story. He used to say that one time an old lady was, you know, she was very old, she was living in a village and she was, she was, uh, you know, very old, she used to go to the village every day and cut wood and had to carry it in her shoulders and come back. So, she had grown so old that at some point she could hardly even carry the wood and she, she was hunched. So one day when she was carrying the wood, she was just crying. If somebody can just come and help me with this wood. And Krishna is so merciful that Krishna appeared just before her and asked her, Maya, can I help you in some way? And guess what this lady tells Krishna? Oh, she could have asked for anything. What she says? Ah, oh, please, you know, can you take this load off my left shoulder and put it on my right shoulder? Prabhupada said, this is today's intelligence. We are using our intelligence, but we don't know how to use it. So, Ashraya... Ashraya, I was just hearing one lecture from my spiritual master recently in Mayapur Yatra, he was saying, what does Ashraya actually mean? Means allowing Krishna to drag us towards him. Wonderful. I was just thinking about it. This is the real meaning of taking Ashraya. And if we see, Srimad Bhagatam is all about this. All about devotees taking Ashraya devotees taking shelter of Krishna and how Krishna is reciprocating. Prahlad Maharaj. See, if you see the pastime of Prahlad Maharaj, I don't want to go into detail, I know in the future it will be discussed, but all that Prahlad Maharaj had to do was to accept his father's proposition. Finally, he could have said, you know, as we use this word very commonly, be practical. Prahlad Maharaj had to just be practical. And he could have externally just told his father, yes, 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 I accept you, you are the Supreme. But did he do that? No. He couldn't do it. Even if he wanted to, he just couldn't do it. In all his trials, whether he was being pushed down the cliff, he was being thrown in serpents, uh, he was being put down, crushed by elephants, the only thing he did was he took shelter of Krishna Kasha. He couldn't think of anything else. It was so natural for him. Amrish Maharaj. Right? We know the pastime of Amrish Maharaj Guru, uh, Durvasa Muni. He never asked Krishna to save him. What he tells Krishna? Krishna, I am yours. Maro bhi, rakho bhi, jo to. And conversely, Durvasa Muni, when he was in the same... Now, Amrish Maharaj was in a bit of a difficult situation because you know this Durvasa Muni created this whole monster to kill him. But he took shelter of Krishna. And the Sudarshan came and killed that monster. 
What did Durvasa Muni do conversely when the Sudarshan was chasing him? Uh, he's a great Muni, he's a great sage. He started running, he started flying, he went to Brahmaji, he went to Shiva, it was taking shelter of everybody but Krishna. This is all what Srimad Bhagavatam is about. And then we have the beautiful, beautiful example of Draupadi. I don't know how much time I have. This is actually a nearly two hour class. I am actually just giving you a very high overview of what I had spoken through all these days. Draupadi, when she was dragged into this Sabha by Dushasan, now we know that you know Duryodhan has announced, declared Karna that she is going to be disrobed. And we know, at least in the Vedic culture, for a Mataji, for a woman, her greatest wealth is her chastity. Nothing more than that. She will not compromise on that. She, will she can compromise on anything else. What did Draupadi do? See, this is very, very instructive. Draupadi first approaches Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra has, has his reasons for not being able to help her. Then she approaches Bhishma Pitama, she approaches Dronacharya, she approaches everybody in the Sabha. And she is disappointed. When is she most disappointed? On whom she puts her most faith? Where she's put all her cards in? Who's that? Yudhishthira, Bhima, Arjun, Nakul, Saide. The minute they put their heads down, she knows it's done. Now this is what is our situation. We put our faith, we put our cards on everything. We have so strong faith in our legal systems, in our medical systems, in our every the whole system around us. But once Draupadi realized that this is nothing is going to help her, we know the whole past time. What did she do? She raised her hands and she cries out, Hey Govinda, Hey Gopal. And Krishna appeared. We know the whole pastime, how that whole factory of saris was just downloaded and she was protected. And after the whole pastime, she asked Krishna, Krishna, if you had to come, why so late? Why did you get me to this point where I nearly thought, okay, nothing's going to work? What did Krishna tell her? Very important message. Krishna told the look Draupadi, the minute you cried out Govinda, we know when she cried out actually Govinda, Krishna was in Dwarka just about to start his prasadam. He was about to take his first morsel and he said, I just heard the go and I was gone. I was here. But what happened? When I came, what did I see? I saw you were still holding the tip of that sari of yours between your teeth. You were still crying, maybe. And only when you let go that, when you realize, okay, it's not going to work against this strong dushasan, you let go that, I took charge. This is Krishnaika Sharanam. This is what Draupadi and this is what Srimad Bhagavatam is teaching us. Now, please don't take the wrong message home that tomorrow if my son is sick, I don't go to the doctor. Because I heard in the class yesterday, Krishna ka Sharanam, so my son is sick, I'm just going to go to Krishna. No. The correct understanding is we still go to the doctor. And for most of you all, if my son falls sick, I take him to the doctor. I'll be truthful. But when we are going to the doctor, where is our dependency? That's the important thing. Our dependency is still on Krishna. We pray to Krishna to use this doctor as an instrument to cure my child. That's the important thing to understand. But right now it's a converse. Our whole dependency is on material arrangements. And then what we do, we also offer and pray to Krishna. So right now, ours is, at least I'm talking for myself, I won't talk for others, it's not Krishnaika, it's Krishna Bhisharanam. Okay. At least initially, we are at least taking shelter of him. But perfection lies in Krishnaika Sharanam. 
when we come to this platform where our only hope, only shelter is Krishna. See, same thing again, Bhagavatam is the fiber. We see the same thing in case of Gajendra. When he was in that Mount Trikuta, in that ocean, he was. it was just another day, another day for him, wonderful day. He was with all his friends, you know, enjoying. It was just another day like for us, you know, in the morning we get up, we take a shower, we get ready and we are turning our car on. How many of us, when we turn our car on, we actually pray to Krishna, please, 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 Krishna, car should work fine and car should... We don't. It's just another, you know, act. So for him it was just like that. What happens? Again, it's a very long pastime. On that particular day, at that particular moment, he is in the clutches of that alligator. Now, till now, he had not taken shelter of Krishna. Right? The moment he gets into that clutches, and he fought uh, the alligator, it's not that he took shelter of, of the Lord immediately. He tried, he tried it for hundreds and hundreds of years, and then he realized it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Finally, he took shelter of Krishna. And we know how the Lord appeared and saved him. This is very, very relevant to us. This elephant was powerful. We have this elephantine ego. We are the kings of our locality, of our situations, of our circumstances, and we are the controllers. And, and this material world, this samsara is like that ocean. The ocean in which this elephant got caught. We never ever realize its gravity of this ocean. And this ocean is infested with crocodiles. Pad pad vipadam. At every step there is a crocodile. And sometimes we are already in the clutches of this crocodile. Again, I was hearing a class of my spiritual master, he was so nicely explaining that what happens is sometimes we are already in the clutches, in the, the teeth of the alligator has already caught us. But what happens is that it takes some time for us to feel the pain. I'm, I'm sure some of you all may have experienced this also. You know, sometimes we get hurt, the pain doesn't come immediately. It may be after minutes, after some time that we start feeling the pain. So in the same way, some of us are already in, the, not some of us, most of us are already in the clutches of those crocodiles. But we are not realizing it. We are, this is the sad part. It just doesn't sink in. Janma Mrityu Jara Vyadi we heard. But it doesn't sink in till we actually become old or we become sick. That's the power of Maya. That's how Maya works. There are some who just hear and realize it. Prahlad Maharaj heard it in his womb, heard it, came out, he was totally realized. Some who hear and see it, Vila Prabhupada had heard it from his spiritual master, he saw it all around him and he was realized, he was intelligent. And then there are some who see, who hear, they don't realize. Beautiful example is the stubborn Ravana. Ramana got advice from everybody, his wife, Narad Muni, his brother, everybody was telling Ramana, give up this crocodile. Sita was his crocodile. Just give her up and you are happy. No, you won't give up. That's our situation. We are hearing, we are hearing, but it's not sinking. So, with time, Kal is in the form of crocodile, it's devouring us. Ayur harati vai pumsham, udyan ashtam chayan asav. With every rising and setting of the sun, we are closer to death. We are not, we are not understanding the urgency. So, as I said, we can talk of so many examples. I'll just like to end with one more example. See, now we've heard of Rajendra, he was in trouble, he took shelter. Prahlad Maharaj, he was in trouble, he took shelter. Draupadi, she was in trouble, she took shelter. So some of us might think, okay, Prabhu, wonderful class, uh, you know, right now I am not in the alligator's jaws, I, at least I don't feel it, or I have not lost my project, Prabhu, my project is going on fine, 
or you know i have a wonderful family so i'll wait i'll wait till that alligator comes and then i will take shelter i give you one last example taking shelter in the good times also because right now apparently right we are in good times right we don't have any uh, gross challenges in front of us again shrimad bhagavatam whose example queen kunti what an example this is what bhagavatam is giving us imagine queen kunti has gone to all these you know she's seen her sons being tormented all through her life literally the war has taken place the war is over now her son yudhishthira maharaj has become king wonderful right now it's all past tense now she should live happily ever after right what does queen kunti do and at that time krishna tells them now see you all are so wonderfully placed she tells kunti devi okay wonderful i have to leave i have to go back to dwarka what does kunti devi pray to krishna vipada shanto tah shaswa tatra tatra jagat guru bhavato darshanam yatsya apunar bhava darshanam she is telling krishna please let all those calamities come back to me again and again and again now somebody might think you know i think because she went through so many she's been tormented for so many years you know she's got some psychological problem that she's wanting all these problems to come back but she gives a reason she says because when these problems come bhavato darshanam yatsad i can see you again and again and again and in seeing you what happens apunar bhava darshanam i no longer have to see this repeated cycle of birth and death and birth and death so here is queen kunti try to understand now she is in a good situation what is she praying to krishna for she is still not praying to krishna that you know uh, no she is still taking ashray shelter of even if it means that let all those calamities come back how many of us would say for it that if we lost our project suppose uh, if we lost our project one year back we pray to krishna krishna please let my project go once more we don't do it and we have to be careful propa always said we cannot imitate queen kunti but we get inspiration from her that how we need to it's a need we need to take shelter of krishna we need to start working coming to come to this platform of where at some point our ashraya will only be krishna initially how it starts is our ashraya will be 1% krishna 99% material okay then you keep working keep working keep working then you'll see over a period of time now 10% is krishna's ashraya and 90% is material ashraya and then that's how at a, a stage comes where will be totally krishna ekeshwaram and in this day and age of kalyuga taking shelter has been made so simple krishna himself when he is appeared as chaitanya mahaprabhu has made it so simple for us to take shelter of him what is that how do we take shelter by chanting the holy names hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so if we also follow in the footstep of guru maharaj and take shelter what is the tapasya he performed he went to the forest for 6 months how many of us can leave our jobs projects everything and go into the forest in so many places we don't even have forest now such a simple tapasya that we have to do in this day and age follow four regulative principles chant the holy names and then what will happen we become eligible for that same result that we are seeing today that we are talking about the lord will appear to us through the holy name through the holy name we can see the name the form i mean the form the past times the attributes of the lord will be revealed to us if we stand in a prayerful mood taking shelter that is what bhakti vinod thakur in that verse has said right in that prayers what did he say जीवन अनित्य जान हो सार कहे नाना बेद विपद भार नाम आश्रय कोरी जतन तुम्हें ठाको आपन का सेम थिंग 
that this material world is vipada at every step. Jivan anitya, this jivan is very temporary and you are staying in a material world which is filled with vipada. What to do? He gives the same solution. Naam ashraya kori, take ashraya of the naam. Jatana tumi, you do your endeavor, how? Taking shelter of the holy name. Naam ashraya kori, jatana tumi, thako apana ajay. Continue doing your work. You take care of your wife, your children, you continue doing whatever you are. Only taking shelter of the holy name. And you will acquire, the, you will become eligible for the same result that Maharaj has acquired. Thank you very much. Grantra, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Nitai Gaur Premanandi. Hari, Hari, Hari. I'm sorry, I don't know whether I went over time. I didn't know what is the cutoff time. Please forgive me if I went over time. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, very wonderful class today. So, Mataji, do we have time for questions or we have gone? I don't know, Mataji, what are the timings on or please forgive me, but... Uh, you can drive and if, the, if there is time for taking questions or if we are already overboard, you can decide, Mataji. I have no questions. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, we can take few questions if you have time. Yeah, I have all the time. It's up to you all how long this class goes. I'm not sure, Mataji. Sure, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandar Pranava, Vashtra Prabhupada, very wonderful, excellent class Prabhuji. And uh, it's like, you know, we were thinking hey, this class should not stop. We were so much uh, into, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So, thank you so much. And uh, if anybody has any question or comments for Prabhuji, please go ahead and ask. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Ajit Ram Prabhu and Ajit Sita Priyadasi. I have seen in Atlanta when you are more than 16 years, uh, you will take care of all the uh, group, uh, all all the counts, all all your group members more than 80, and after that you start in Danduri also, and you are. You are so happy to hear that now uh, at Jadi Kadadar Prabhu and. Uh, uh, Gaurav Prabhu and mo those who are trained under you, they all become a spiritual moment. They are taking class in different, different area. And Ram Prabhuji, especially I have seen when I came in your house, how sincerely you are doing morning program in your house. Nobody is seen, but I have seen that how sincerely you are uh, doing, especially Japa, how attentively Japa, like I feel that I am sitting in front of Maharaj. Thank you very much for your association and Sita Priya is making wonderful prashadam and I want to add one more thing that I am not able to come Alpha Rita to attend your class so that when we came from the job me and my daughter Shivani sit uh, and um, online we are attending your Bhagavad Gita class by um, uh, uh, Govind Shah Prabhuji signed us a link. Thank you very much for your association. Then what program? Still a Prabhupada, still a Guru Dev ki jai, Ram Prabhu ki jai. Thank you, Mataji, for your very kind words of encouragement. Uh, do we have anybody who wants to ask some questions also? Yes, Prabhuji, I have a question, Prabhu. So thank you, yes, Prabhuji, for a very nice explanation and analogies you have given in the references from the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, for taking the shelter and, you know, it's very important you know, and getting the guidance. Uh, one common thing which I realized in all the scenarios was that, you know, everybody who was seeking for the guidance was in some kind of distress. And, you know, then they were looking for, um, we are in that situation, but unfortunately, you know, I don't know about others, but we don't realize that we should go and seek for guidance, you know, and that's another criteria because of which we don't go towards Krishna. So how do we understand that situation in ourselves that yes, we are literally in in problem or, you know, people who are around us and we see them, you know, they are materially engrossed but don't realize that they are in a problem. Thank you so much Prabhuji for the question. Nice, very interesting question. Uh, Prabhuji, see, I'll give you, I can explain it to you. Uh, you know what happens, suppose I am swimming, I am in the water. A lot of things what happens is that 
I don't realize the perils, the dangers of where I'm swimming. And it takes uh, someone to come and tell me, to guide me, to help me, to explain to me that you are in a danger zone. You can drown at any given time. And rather, I'll give you all an example. Uh, we had gone for the Karthik Yatra this time. And uh, I don't know whether you all heard of it that there, there was an episode. You know, the beach in Orissa, in uh, Jubi, in uh, uh, Jagannath Puri is very dangerous. It's very perilous. A lot of people drown over there. So we had already been given instructions. Please be very careful when you'll go to take your bath. But despite all that, there was an incident where two devotees nearly drowned and somebody saved them and came back. Following that, one day Gaurav Prabhu was giving a class and he explained something wonderful. He said, who drowns, do you know? He said, a, a new swimmer will never drown. Always it is the expert swimmer or somebody who thinks himself to be an expert is the person who drowns. Because he's the one who perils into the danger zone. So similarly, what we need to at, given, at any given time is, we need this person or group of people, Sangha, who will keep reminding us, who will keep, uh, you know, guiding us that, as I just now said, you know, Bhakti, you know, Thakur is also saying that there are perils at every step. There's danger at every step. You may not be able to see it. You know how an elephant is caught, how they catch an elephant. They make a big hole and they cover it up with grass. And this elephant just, you know, very happily he's walking along, walking along, not knowing that there's the big hole dug under this grass. Boom! He just steps on it and he falls. That's our situation today. And if you don't do the Sangha, who's going to tell us that, stop it, that grass, it's not grass, there's a big huge hole dug there, you're going to fall down there or you're swimming in danger waters. So that's where this Sangha comes in. It's very important to have very uh, regular Sangha with the devotees. More so, not only for helping ourselves, for helping each other, helping others also. You know, if I know that okay, this person, I, I see some activities of this person which are perilous, it can really kill his Krishna Mandir. As a well-wisher, I help that person. Or somebody sees me, you know, doing something which might be dangerous for my sister, he or she helps me. It's, it's only the Sangha which can save us. So does that uh, help you, Prabhu? Does that answer your question or you were looking for something else? Uh, yes, Prabhuji, that answers. My question was a little more specific to people who are not involved in Krishna consciousness. Okay. So you're talking so, of... Uh, I would say people just in general, pop the general populace. Right. Right. So in that case, what happens? It becomes our duty, our compassion. It's simple. Now, when you see somebody drowning in the ocean, you don't analyze, oh, okay, this person is drowning. Sorry, he, I don't know him. He's not my friend. Okay, fine. I have nothing to do with him. When you see somebody drowning or when you see somebody driving rash on the road, you don't care who he is. At least as a devotee for us, compassion is supposed to be the main quality of a devotee, right? Paradukhadukhi. So we, to our extent, whatever way we can, at least we should try to, you know, help people, save people. Like as I said, you know, this is the month of marathon, okay? What more compassion can we do than giving these books of Srila Prabhupada to people, right? We know they are drowning, whether they accept it or they don't accept it. As I said... There are some people who see, they hear, but they still don't realize. They are stubborn. So we, mm -hmm. as their well wishers, you know, we give them some book. We pray for them. We don't consider, oh, this person is not a devotee or, you know, he is ultimately a child of God. We have to see everybody as a child of Krishna and how best we can connect them to Krishna. If we can't give them books, you know, call them home for prasadam or, you know, as, you know, so many sadhus say that, carry prasadam with you in your car and just, you know, when I used to be in Atlanta, I used to do this, you know. In my car, I always used to keep these, uh, what do you call them, uh, food bars. I used to offer it in a house and we used to keep it in the car. And then uh, at a lot of stops, you know, uh, signals, these uh, homeless people would come. And then when we gave them, they were so happy, you know. So they are eating Krishna. It's going to help them in some way. So these are different ways of, you know, trying to maroon these people, trying to try to save these people who are drowning, you know. Sure, Thank you, Prabhu. That that helps a lot. Thank you so much for the very nice explanation, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhuji.
हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धन्यवाद श्री दामोदर आनंद दास प्रभु हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी आई टू क्वेश्चन फॉर यू नंबर वन आई डिड नॉट गेट द पॉइंट वेर यू सेड वेन द डिवोटी वॉज कैरिंग ए लोड एंड शी आज कृष्णा टू शिफ्ट द लोड फ्रॉम द राइट टू लेफ्ट शोल्डर दैट इज द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन आई हैव सेकेंड वन इज यू नो आई एम लिटिल बिट इंट्रीक दैट ध्रुव महाराज एंड ऑल्सो बली महाराज दे वर नॉट ट्रांसफर्ड टू कृष्ण लोक और वैकुंठा ध्रुव महाराज हैज टू रूल फॉर थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड ईयर्स एंड देन ही हैज टू लिव ऑन दे नॉट फॉर फॉर टिल द नेक्स्ट प्रलय एंड बली महाराज हैज टू गो टू सूतला rule over there and then he'll be the next indra you still be in the material world for very long time whereas we see so many examples like ajamila he after only few years he could go to vaikuntha and you know any other example even in kaliyuga uh, i forget the name of that uh, great devotee from maharashtra uh, he was also sent uh, tukaram 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 sent tukaram yeah 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 thank you So why is it so? That is, I guess. So the first example that we gave of that lady, you know, uh, she is uh, asking the Lord to transfer her load from right to left. What Prabhupada is trying to explain is, don't take it in a very literal way. The message that Prabhupada is trying to give us is that even after, especially for us, even after understanding so much, even after. uh realizing the perils of this material world if somebody goes and approaches the lord for as we saw in this example you know some material desire or this lady telling you know lift my load from the left to the right you know like prabhupada also used to give another example of a beggar going to a king the king said today at sunrise to sunset anybody who comes i'll give you anything so this beggar goes with a begging bowl and he says that you know my bowl has a hole can you give me a new bowl prabhupada said he is going to a king he could have asked for just a million dollars i get it and i'm done with the begging but no he still is so you know uh he still attached to that begging part of it that he goes to the king and he asks him for a bowl versus you know getting totally out of that whole getting to the root of the problem so what prabhupada used to try to explain is that we need to we need to get out of this material world what is the root problem we have to understand that all these are secondary problems like even if these problems get resolved of us at the end of the day we are still the janma mrityu jara vyadi is not sinking in that's the problem we are still in the clutches of that alligator and as long as we keep trying it as i said in the class as long as we keep trying it maybe we can get rid of one alligator we win over one alligator come out and there's another alligator waiting for me so then other the second alligator catches me so what prabhupada is trying to say and we are again coming to the root is taking ashraya or shelter of krishna we need to get this understanding that it's only at that point when uh when gajendra took shelter of the lord that he was freed not only from that alligator he was freed from that whole samsara ocean so that's the point that we need to understand that's very important not approaching the lord for anything other than unmotivated as i said sabha kum sam paru dharma that is shrimad bhagavatam the highest dharma is coming to that platform of unmotivated uninterrupted devotional service to the lord that is krishna ka sharanam or taking ashraya of krishna that example i said prabhupad used to always give you know of that woman or of this begging bowl and all that does that make sense prabhu yes prabhu you thank you very much uh, now i understand on any kind of take an example like of through maharaj you said that uh, you know he had to be here for 36000 years so proper explain in the purport if you can please read that purport it's a very wonderful purport as i said when krishna is pleased when the lord was pleased with dhruv maharaj of course he gave him the dhruv lok and he could have gone back to dhruv lok immediately but proper says that since dhruv maharaj started off with this desire that he wanted a kingdom even greater than his father great grand gra- grandfather great grandfather krishna wanted to fulfill that desire of his also and that's why he gave him the king and uh, made, gave him the kingdom and told him you'll rule this kingdom for 35 36000 years there's only a difference is that now when he is ruling the kingdom he is not you know 
there's such a big difference between him and I hate to say Donald Trump. Now when he's ruling it, he's ruling it on behalf of the Supreme Lord. So it made no difference to him whether he ruled for 35,000 years or for however long it was, you know. That was the difference. But the Lord is still fulfilling his desire. Since he came with that desire, he's still fulfilling that desire of giving him that kingdom and you rule for 35,000 years. And at the end he knows that I'm going to go back to the spiritual world. So if you read that purport, Prabhupada, as I said, you know, the purport was very long, we couldn't go through the whole thing. Prabhupada explains it very nicely. Does that make yes, sense? Prabhu? Prabhu, yeah. Yes, Prabhupada, that's right. Uh, Prabhupada does explain in the purport, but my question is that although Guru Maharaj started with a material desire, but when mm -hmm. he saw Krishna, even in his prayer, he says that I don't want anything now. I, everything is like short of glass Correct. to me when I, you know. So once he has, so he had given up his desire. You know, it was not that he was still continuing with his desire. So I mean, just the thought. Uh, this, uh, I'm still not, you know, satisfactorily for myself. Uh, yeah, if you see I the last paragraph of the, the last time. paragraph of the purport, Prabhupada very clearly explains this. Although Dhruv Maharaj's achievement of an eternal planet was not conceived of by him, Krishna thought, what will Dhruv Maharaj do with an exalted position within the material world? Therefore, he gave Dhruv the opportunity to rule this material world for 36,000 years with unchangeable senses and the chance to perform many great sacrifices and thus become the most reputed king within this material world. This is what Krishna wanted him to do. And after finishing with all the material enjoyments, Guru would be promoted to the spiritual world, which includes Guru. In the last paragraph, Prabhupada very clearly explains why Krishna gave it to him. Krishna thought that let him enjoy over being as the king as for 35,000 years, and then he goes back to Guru. Okay, Prabhu, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. A very nice class. Really enjoyed it. Very good. Thank you, Prabhu. Anybody else have any other question or comments, please? Hi, Krishna Prabhu. Yeah, actually, I have a few questions. Um, but let me just follow up on this last one. So, um, in answer to this question about why Krishna gave Druva drew the Lok to, to preside over it, even though he no longer had material desires, is it that you're, you're, you're just referring us to the purport, or, or, or did you actually try to answer that question? I'm because, I mean, if you wanted to add something, please, you can feel free to add. No, no, I'm, I'm, I too am asking, I too I would like to know the answer. So I don't know if you if you have already tried to answer or are you just simply asking us to go read the purport only? No, no, no. I, I told both the things. One is to read the purport because Prabhupada explains it very nicely. And as I said earlier, that mm -hmm. what happened is that Krishna wanted to still fulfill the desire also of Guru Maharaj. But he initially when he started devotional service, he did not, it wasn't Anya Abhilasha Kashunya. It's not that he went without any Abhilasha, without any desires. He did go with that desire and Krishna wanted to still fulfill that desire. But as I said, when you go to Krishna, he fulfills your desire, but now your heart has been purified. So even though you get the kingdom, initially his king purpose of getting the kingdom was different. He wanted to, you know, he wanted to, as I could say, get equal with his father or whatever it may be. But now when he's going to rule, he's going to rule it in, in, in as a representative of Krishna. So that cleansing purification has happened. That's why Krishna knows even if he used, if he rules for 35,000 years, he's, he's, just, he's just going to rule it. He's not, that enjoyment part has been cleared out from his heart. That purification has already happened. Okay, so this is, my question is this. You know, Krishna knew that at this point he's no longer, that Judah is no longer, Judah is no longer interested in, ruling the kingdom for any selfish enjoyment. He knew that, you know, because by, by, by this point, 
still had become embarrassed realizing, you know, right. by comparison, you know, what he had asked for. So what I don't understand is why Krishna would still want him to, to rule this planet even though, or this kingdom, even though he knows that Druva has no interest for selfish reasons. You know? I'll give you another reason, Mataji. I'll give you another reason. Because in the future chapters or the verses, you all will see, uh, as I said, his other brother Uttama and his other mother uh, Suruchi are going to die, and his father Uttanapad is going to leave the, king and, uh, leave the palace and go. So there is no other heir to the kingdom. So Krishna wants him as a service to take charge of the kingdom. Oh, okay. Now, yes. Yeah. In the following chapters, it will be explained, uh, following verses rather, that his mm. stepmother and Uttama, who are the only two heirs, he and Uttama are the two sons of Uttanapal. So mm. his stepmother and Uttama are going to die. So mm. Dhruv Maharaj, Dhruv is the only person who is left to take charge of the kingdom, and Uttanapal will be leaving the mm. kingdom and going to the forest. So, so that's another reason okay. why Krishna wants him as a service also to rule. Okay, now it makes sense to me. Now it makes sense. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm sorry, I should have brought that up, but... No, no, it's okay. Okay, I, I actually have a couple of other questions, if you have time. Mataji, I have the time. I'm not sure how long the call goes or how long it can be extended, but I'm available to answer questions. Okay, I, I hopefully, I don't think it should take too long. Um, you have drawn parallel between the austerities that Dhruva made and the austerities that Hiranyakashipu made, right? Uh, yes, okay. Okay, and so, um, you know, they both had selfish motives for right. per performing their austerities. So I'm wondering why, um, I mean, of course, you know, Hawaii Kashi Kru's motives, he had particularly heinous mentality toward Krishna. You know, he wanted to kill him, basically. But, you know, whatever the reason is, they both had uh, selfish motives. So I'm wondering why um, the, the outcomes of their austerities were so vastly different. I think I mentioned that, Mataji, that... Uh only reason of the difference in the outcome of that process was that Guru Maharaj approached the Supreme Lord Krishna Vishnu and uh, Hiranya Kachiku did not approach the Supreme Lord. He was, uh, he pleased Brahmaji and Brahmaji when he came, so Brahmaji, you know, as we know, if you perform uh, the worship of any demigod perfectly, they're bound. That's what in Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, Am all those verses. He explains very nicely that how when you worship a demigod, the demigod is bound to reciprocate to whatever tapasya, whatever you have done for. But mm -hmm. the difference between the two is that when you approach the Supreme Lord, as I said, the Lord will fulfill your desire. But how he does it is you get purified. The desire itself is mm -hmm. gone. You pay to the Lord for a, for a 60-inch TV and you get the TV. But by the time you get the 60-inch TV, Whereas in case of worship of any other personality but the Supreme Lord, what happens mm -hmm. is if you worship them perfectly, they are bound to fulfill your desires whether that is for your benefit or not. Mm -hmm. That's okay. how it works. So when yeah. Brahmaji was approached and he told him, I want immortality, he said, I cannot give you that. Okay, then what? And because Rinya Kashipu, you know, was the smart one. So he said, I want Dhamma to die in the morning, evening, night, and Brahmaji gave him everything. So that is the difference. And that's why, as I said in Bhagavatam, it is said, A Kama, Sarva Kama, Moksha Kama, Udharadi, what is the uh Oh, oh, my goodness, the call is beginning to break up a little bit. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, your, your voice had begun to break up a little bit. But I think I, I, I did get your point. Yeah, I, I actually forgot that, uh, you know, Rani Kashipu, the difference was that, you know, he, he prayed to Brahma, whereas, you know, um, he would pray to Krishna, you know, or Vishnu. So, yeah. Okay, um, 
one other question was concerning, I just want to confirm my understanding that, um, you know, the, the, the problem, and the Draupadi, when she was trying, when she was trying to protect herself, she, I think she, she, she called, I think you say, you know, she did call out to Krishna, but at the same time, she, she was still trying to protect herself um, or rely on her own strength a little bit um, in order to, you know, protect herself. And that's mm-hmm. the symbol of, of her holding on to a little piece of her sorry. So her, her de- the point is that by holding on to a little, even just a little piece of her sorry, it means that her dependence on Krishna was not complete. It was only partial. It was, is that it was the 99%. <laughs> Yeah, and so as long as it's not 100%, is it that we should expect that Krishna will not manifest to us? Well, no, that's no, not true. That's not true. See, in, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna very clearly establishes ye yatha maam prapadyante taam bhajaniyam. He says that however one approaches me, so if our surrender is 50%, Krishna reciprocates accordingly. It's not that, uh, you know, uh, Krishna doesn't even consider unless you are not 100% surrendered that I don't even, I don't even look at you. It's not like that. So Krishna reciprocates exactly according to what we want, how we want, how we want him to reciprocate with us. He reciprocates accordingly. So that's where, you know, see Prabhupada. If you see the example of Prabhupada, his whole life, his whole life was just total dependence on Krishna. In every, you, we can just give a whole class on this, you know. Even in the Jaladuta, when he wrote those prayers, what is he praying to Krishna? Na chao, na chao, more, na chao, she mote, pa she ra putuli mato, na chao, she mote. I'm just a puppet, Krishna. You make me dance like a puppet. So, what does that mean? Puppet means he's totally in the hands of the puppeteer. You make me stand up, you make me sit down. This is exactly what. When we are talking of Krishnaika Sharanam, this is the perfection, this is the epitome. Now, we may not be there, but that's what I said, that's our aspiration. How mm-hmm. seriously are we at least trying to get there? Now, somebody might say, okay, Prabhu, what happens if by death, you know, I don't make it there? So that's where Prabhupada has given us so much assurance that whatever is the gap between the expectation and what you achieved, he said, I will fill it in. He said that if you have achieved 82%, the 18% shot will be filled in by Srila Prabhupada. That's the amount of faith we have to have in Srila Prabhupada. So he, you know, he gave us so much assurance. He said, I have the keys to the back door of Vekuntha and there's no keys to the back door. But this is what he meant. That if you don't make it to the 100%, I'll take care. Don't worry. But at least you sincerely find. The sincerity part is so important because Krishna sees how sincere are we in our heart. Are we trying sincerely or we are just, you know, show bottles? We are just trying to show, oh, Krishna, I'm so sincere. But you can't fool Krishna, right? You can fool everybody but Krishna. He's there in our heart. That's why he's taken Mm -hmm. such a strategic position. He's sitting in the heart. You can't fool me, he says. Just like in a house, you have these cameras. They put these cameras in such positions where you can't fool them. Similarly, Krishna is sitting in our heart. You can't fool them. Prabhupada said, you try sincerely. Sincerity is the key. If we try sincerely, we get 24%. Trust me, Prabhupada will fill in this 24, 26. But we have to be sincere. But, so you're, you're saying that if we, if we try our best to reach 100% dependence on Krishna, but we're not able to get to 100% dependence, Krishna will fill in the gap. Yes, that's what you know. That's why at mm-hmm. least we should sincerely put in our hearts. That's mm-hmm. what Krishna wants to see. Like I can just give you a simple example. You know, like if a child, a child is learning to walk. Now, if my child, the first time when he gets up and he starts walking and after taking two steps, he falls down. Do I slap him? No. <laughs> I'm going to give him my hand. I'm so happy to see he took the first two steps. So I'm going to encourage him. I'm going mm-hmm. to hold his hand and I'm going to pick him up and I'm going to tell him, okay, start walking. Then next time mm-hmm. he'll take four steps and he'll fall down. I'm not going to slap mm-hmm. him. That's mm-hmm. how exactly Krishna works. When he mm-hmm. sees me, I'm sincere and I'm falling, picks me up, I have to come back on track. That's the important thing. So once mm-hmm. I come back on track, 
again I start moving, I fall down, Krishna again picks me up. This is, it's the same principle like that child falling and we helping him, encouraging yeah. him. Yeah. Does that make sense, Mataji? Yeah, very, very much so. Thank you so much. But I, I, I just want to ask one more thing about Draupadi is that, you know, when she is, you know, trying her best to, you know, hold on to her story, which is like, you know, that's like analogous to, you know, somebody falls sick. You know, they do try to get better. They, they consult doctor. They take medicine and so on. So something like that. So just, you know, Draupadi... She had a duty to protect her chastity, you know, just like a, if a person falls sick, they have a duty to try to regain their health. So when, you know, by making these endeavors, you know, to do that, whether it be to hold on to your sorry or to go to the doctor, whatever, but these endeavors are, are a duty. And so, but you're saying that the fault, you know, is that if you are, what I'm asking is, is the fault that in making these endeavors to do our duty that we are not um, recognizing that <clears throat> Krishna is, has the ultimate, you know, say on what the outcome is? We're just thinking that, you know, by holding on to my sari, I can do it by myself, or by going to the doctor, you know, I can heal it without Krishna. I mean, is that the problem there? Because, you know, the endeavor out of duty we are supposed to make, you know, right? I don't know if you get the question. Uh oh, Prabhu, your, your voice is not coming through. I don't know what's happening right now. I don't know if you hear me, but the, the your voice, your answer is not coming because the voice is not coming through. Oh. Huh? Also not able to hear you. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody has to connect again at Jiram Prabhu. Yes. Yes. Mataji, are you there? Can you please connect again, Ram, Pra- Ram Prabhu ji? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Who, is anyone connecting Prabhuji? No, no, please connect uh, Ram Prabhuji again. Oh, I don't have the number. Let me... Shamagari Mataji, are you there? Mm-hmm. Can anyone put uh, uh, Prabhuji's number in the coordinator's group? Yes, Mataji, wait. Who connected earlier? Uh, I didn't connect. Let me connect him now. Sure. Krishna Mataji, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, perfectly. Okay. Thank I'm sorry, you. I yeah. Something of my internet got disconnected. So uh, what yeah. I was saying is that uh-huh. uh, we are not saying we don't do the endeavor. I'll give you an example. You know, we we talk of this pastime of the Damodar Lila, correct? Now, in yeah. that we talk of these two fingers which were short. One finger represents the endeavor of the devotee. 
Mm-hmm. So whatever endeavor we do, the only thing that happens by that endeavor is it attracts the mercy of the Lord. So we are totally dependent on the mercy of the Lord. We are not dependent on the endeavor. It's very important to understand this point. The whole mm-hmm. today's material world, how does it work? Its total dependency is on our endeavor. But now we are being explained that no, 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 no. The dependency should not be on our endeavor because all that the endeavor does is it ex- attracts the mercy of Krishna. So coming back to this example, if I go to a doctor also, if we take it that I go to the doctor, doctor is so expert that see he cured my child, that's where the problem is. But if I go to the doctor with this understanding that if Krishna wills, then he's mm-hmm. going to use this doctor as an instrument to cure my child, then we mm-hmm. are in good situation. Mm-hmm. So okay, it's, yes. So, so it's, then, it's, it's, it, we need we need both things. We need endeavor and Krishna's mercy. So since endeavor is also required, then I feel that Jyotiri should never have let go of her sorry because you know endeavor should still be there. Right, right. She did her endeavor till she came to a point where she was helpless. Now, there are a lot of times when don't we come to a helpless situation where it's totally beyond us and where no endeavor is helping, then what do you do? Then you give mm-hmm. up endeavor and you take total shelter of Krishna. I'll give you an example. When Prabhupada was a child, his father tried everything to cure him of his, uh, he had contracted TB or typhoid. Okay. And that, that time, unfortunately, there was no cure for typhoid except for giving him non-vegetarian soup and all and they tried. That was just not anywhere in their radar. So what did then, see, he put in his endeavor, he took him to various doctors, he tried everything, till it came to a point where he realized that my endeavors are not working, they're not going to work. Then what mm-hmm. he did, he took total shelter of Krishna. Simple like, suppose in today's world, a lot of times what happens, even doctors, you know, when there's a patient who's, uh, you know, terminal, like he's just going to now survive for six, seven, eight hours. The doctor tells the patient's relatives to take him home. So, are we telling that the doctor is now giving up his endeavor? Now? No, there's nothing that can be done. He realizes his helplessness. He tells, take this patient home and let him die peacefully in the house. So, similarly, we do our endeavor. Draupadi did her endeavor till she came to a point she realized she's no mm-hmm. match for Kushasam. At mm-hmm. that point, she gives up the endeavor also. That's mm-hmm. the difference. We don't give up the endeavor, but if we come to a point where endeavor doesn't work, I was talking to one very senior Vaishnava when I was in Atlanta. He told me that for a Vaishnava, when he's leaving his body, as far as possible, it should be that he should not even have one single pin or tube in his body. He said, this is what is the idol. That is showing Krishna his total dependence. That, okay, I'm done now. Nothing is going to work with me. I'm ready, Krishna. Here I go. Here you take care of me. So, point that I'm trying to make is, it's not that we don't do the end of work. Stage always comes where we see that the end of it's beyond us. At that point, Draupadi puts her hand up. Is that making sense, mm. Rapadi? Oh, perfectly. It's just that um, when, 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 if a person is in such a situation where, you know, nothing is working, so they're totally helpless, what does complete um, surrender to Krishna look like in that case? Or does it depend on each person? Mataji, I didn't hear the last part, sorry. You know, when a person is in that helpless situation, Mm -hmm. for that person, I was wondering what complete surrender and dependence looks like. Does that depend on each person and each situation? Or is there a general way in which that complete surrender it look. depends on what, what is the situation it uh-huh, depends yeah. on what is the, suppose if a person is ill he's about to leave mm-hmm. his body so then in that mm-hmm. case dependency would be like you know have sadhus amongst you they do kirtan they recite the chaitanya charitra med shrimad bhagavatam that's taking shelter of krishna you know so it all mm-hmm. depends on what situation you are and how you can you know how you can uh, uh, take more shelter of krishna in whichever situation it is yeah yeah and this is really the last thing. I'm so sorry to be taking so much time, but um, um, when Queen, you, you gave Queen Kunti as an example, where you know, you know, 
at that point when you were discussing Queen Kunti, you said even in good times, we should be taking shelter, not only, you know, when we are in difficulty. So I was wondering how that looks also that, you know, when we are, you know, there, there are no major problems facing us, you know, how, how does that look? this taking shelter of Krishna even in the good times. In Mataji, you see, the, the, here's where the challenge comes. Because when we don't take shelter in the good times, it gets that much more challenging to take shelter in the bad times. It's just like, you know, uh, a student. A student who has studied all the year round when the final exam comes, he's, he's the one who's laughing. Okay, it's an exam, I'm ready for it. And here you have another mm -hmm. student who's not studied all through the year. So then for him, the final exam is, oh, you know, it's like the whole roof falling on him. So similarly, mm -hmm. that's what, if we are taking shelter of Krishna in the good times, you know, in Hindi, mm -hmm. I, you don't know Hindi, but I can just tell you that, then when the, if in good times you remember, you are in a meditative mood, you are always taking shelter of Krishna. So when the bad comes, when the challenge comes, it's so natural for you to take shelter of Krishna. It's very natural, you know, it, it, versus when the challenge comes, like in case of Gajendra, it was after 100 years of struggle, you know, it wasn't that he took shelter immediately. So then it gets challenging because he was, you know, he thought he's so powerful and then he thought his relatives may come and help him. It, that's the problem. In good times, if we don't take the shelter, then when the challenges come, our first hope is always material arrangements. My father, my relatives. My legal advisor, my CPA, my doctors, they're going to do something. But if I'm going to my whole life, you know, taking shelter of Krishna, my first bet would be Krishna. It's not that I mm -hmm. won't go to my CPA, I won't go to my doctor. But my first bet is still going to be Krishna. I'm going to prior to Krishna. Krishna, okay, I'm here in this situation, I'm going to this doctor. If you desire, if you so desire, Prabhupada said that, right? That we should pray to Krishna, if you so desire, please let, you know, my spiritual master's help be this or my friends, or my son become okay. Prabhupada said that. So then we tell, we pray to Krishna in that way. That Krishna, I am in this dilemma. Please, you know, if you can, I am taking shelter of you. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm and we see, it. yeah, very much. And so we see all these people through whom we are seeking help only as Krishna's instruments, if you are in the right consciousness, yes. right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. see, as a devotee, we don't expect Krishna now to come down. If I have a back sore, Krishna will personally come and, you know, do an incision yeah. and cure me of my sore, back sore, right? Yeah, but right. he never wants that. He doesn't want it. So he takes it that, you know, Krishna is going to inspire this doctor or this lawyer or this attorney or whoever it is. and it, it, Krishna is going to use him as an instrument, as a channel to relieve me of mm -hmm. my suffering or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you've been so helpful for in all these points. Thank you very, very much. Hi, Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Uh, I think there was some other Prabhu who wanted to ask some question. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's Srinivas Anand Prabhu or someone wanted to ask a question. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanavad Pranam, I'm sorry, I, I don't know if the Prabhuji is there, are you there Prabhuji? Maybe working Prabhuji. Yeah, okay. Prabhuji I have a question if you have time. Mataji, as I said I have the time, uh, I see he is still there, Krishna Kumari Mataji no, is his no, number. No, no, that's not. Okay, okay, sorry. sorry. Yeah Mataji, I have the time please. Prabhuji, here, uh, this is not a question exactly related to this verse, but uh, in the few, uh, one of the verses before this, um, uh, the Lord is telling Dhruva that uh, uh, Suruchi will die out of a snake bite, and Uttama also, and, um, and so in the purport, uh, it was mentioned that because... Uh, they offended uh, Dhruva Maharaj, even though he was a small boy, he was a great Vaishnava and and then, you know, Prabhupada says that we shouldn't, uh, we should be careful. So, the um, question is like, um, was uh, Dhruva Maharaj forgave 
her uh, right hand uh, she, she also you know uh, forgot that uh, feelings and you know repented for that and and uh, and then he was so much he was okay with them that you know when uttama <coughs> and the yakshas uttama died he fought with the yakshas for him mm-hmm. so the question was uh, like so when once offense is forgiven uh then like we see in uh, uh the ambarish maharaj's case that how uh when uh, durvasamuni approached finally ambarish maharaj then he was forgiven from by the sudarshan chakra so how is it uh, prabhu ji looks like this offense was uh, forgiven by durva maharaj but why then uh this uh, punishment for them Mataji, I I know this this much that Dhruv Maharaj, after this episode, he didn't carry any ill feelings for them. But as it's mentioned in the 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 Bhagavatam, that immediately after he comes back into the palace, immediately uh, after comes back palace, some time, Suruchi, as you said, uh, she and her son both die. Now, this is what we, the principle that we need to understand is that when we offend devotees, more than if you offend the Lord, the Lord is not that much. Uh, does not take it as much as an offense as we offend devotees like there is that bhajan which we saying uh hari sthane aparade tare hari naam if you do any offense to the lord the lord will if you chant the holy names of the lord the lord will forgive you tomar sthane aparade nahi paritran that if you offend the devotee of the lord the lord will not forgive you unless the devotee forgives you like in the, we saw in the case of amrish maharaj we see in the case of uh, jagai and madai also that nityanand prabhu forgave them and he was uh, you know they got the mercy of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu so the point that we need to understand here is that <coughs> she offended a devotee dhruv maharaj and the result was the lord as we as you said in the previous verses he said that they both will die and they died now i am not sure whether there is any mention specifically that dhruv maharaj did not forgive them so the lord destined it that they were going to die and they died and that was also one of the desires you can say because he went with a very revengeful mood when he approached the lord as i said at the beginning of the class he went with two desires actually one was to get even with his mother and the second was to get this whole domain of you know getting a kingdom bigger than his so the lord wanted to fulfill both his desires to fulfill the other desire you know the mother and the son had to die it was like that Yeah, thank you, Prabhu Ji. Thank you very much, mm-hmm. and thank you for thank coming you. on the conference call. We still remember the classes that you gave on six hours to come long back in the eleven o'clock conference. If you have time, we would like to hear that uh, class again, Prabhu Ji. Thank you so much. Thank you for reminding me, Mataji. Actually, I had nearly forgotten that I had given those classes, but thank you so much, Mataji, for reminding me. Oh, Prabhu, can I just ask? You know, since this um. So it came up. Is it that um, Uttama he did not commit any offense? I was just wondering why he had to die. Also, was it just because um, so, uh, Krishna wanted um, Dhruva to rule the kingdom? Yes. Or yes. yes. It, it was, so it was. It was not because of any offense on his part then. not really because if uttama would have been there he would have become the he would have been entitled to become the king also so the mm-hmm. lord wanted dhruva maharaj to become the king and rule the whole planet so that's mm-hmm. how he arranged it okay and how did he die i was just wondering, how did, how did he die dhruva i mean uttama uh okay okay yeah it I comes think. in the following i think there was a battle with the yakshas or something and in that he gets killed the mother okay. i think she goes to a forest and she is uh, she dies in the forest some i am i'm not remembering exactly but i know in the or uttama in the battle i think he gets killed by the yakshas or something yeah. it will be okay. coming i think in the next chapter or in the following chapter mm-hmm. yeah, she got died in the forest okay okay thank you very much thank you much mm. yeah she got died in the forest forest fire because her son got uh, her, uh, died in the forest she, she went to look up to him and then 
in the forest when she got died. So both of them died in the forest, right, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Correct. Thank you, Prabhu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just interested to to make sure that it wasn't because it didn't seem like he had committed any offense, you know. You know, so I just want to make sure it wasn't for that reason. No, Mm-hmm. Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, then Mr. Nam. Uh, just one clarification I wanted. Like, I think Mataji asked that question. So, uh, in the austerities that Guru Maharaj does and uh, the other uh, demons do, in that one difference is that uh, they all are praying to the other demigods and Guru uh, Maharaj prayed for Lord Vishnu, right? That is correct. And second thing, Prabhuji, like, uh, it was only because he prayed to Lord Vishnu that he could impart in the knowledge. The other demigods will not be able to do that, right? It is not necessary. It depends on what you are approaching the demigods for. Can I, I can give you an example. Uh, we read in the Srimad Bhagatam, the residents of Vrindavan, the gopis. Whom did they worship? They worshipped Katyani Devi. Now Katyani Devi is a demigod. But they, for what reason did they worship her? They worshipped her that they may get the Supreme Lord Krishna whom they loved as their consorts, as their husbands. So it depends on what you are approaching the, on what you are approaching the demigods for also. Okay, Prabhu. Okay. Thank Does you. that make sense, Mataji? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Yes. Getting it, yes. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhuji Dhanvat Pranam. Please give your exorcism regularly. Hari Pol, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Guru Dev Ki Jai. Hare Ram Prabhu Ki Jai. Yeah, actually in the following chapter, Mataji, uh, you will see that it's written that Guru Maharaj's younger brother Uttam, who was, uh, this is your following, chapter 10, verse 3, it's just mentioned that Uttam, who was still unmarried, once went on a hunting ex- excursion to the forest, and he was killed by a powerful yaksha. Along with him, his mother Suruchi also followed the path of her son and she died. So as far as Bhagavatam is concerned, this is all it says about the mother and the son, that they just went to the forest and they were killed. Okay, thank you very much for looking that up for me. Thank you. No problem, Mm Adhi. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for your wonderful association. Um, if there are no questions or comments, uh, can we end the call? Thank you so much, Prabhu, again. For the very thank you, Mataji, and thank you, everybody, for joining the call and very patiently giving me your Krishna. association. And I, whenever needed, if I can serve you all in any way, I will be more than happy. Thank you, everybody. Vamsha Kalpatru.